morning, everybody, and welcome to the very first annual Script of Palooza. You like that? I like that. That's like awesome. That? So uh, you have myself, Dave Savage, and my partner in crime co-host today, Todd Bookspan, and we are super fired up. Uh, we've got over 2,000 mortgage professionals who have joined us today. So, well, 2,000 who have signed up. We'll find out exactly how many are going to join us today. Uh, hopefully you can see my screen. Hopefully you can see the video. We're going to be bringing other leaders in and out of the conversation over the course of the day. Todd and I wanted to kick things off with this um, quote from Jeremy Forcier, who we'll be interviewing in about 45 minutes. But when I interviewed Jeremy one, Jeremy one time, he said, great scripting is more important than marketing. It's more important than anything, and here's why. If you have the right script, you can increase your batting average by 100% or 100 points. So we're talking about an, an entirely different income bracket if you're talking to enough people. So I love two things about that. One, it pushes us to improve the quality of our conversations and scripting. And two, it pushes us to talk to enough people. So super fired up. Todd, you want to cover who's going to be on today's call? You know, we are uh, super excited to have an all-star lineup for you. You can already see some of the folks here on the screen who are coming early. People are going to be popping in and popping out. And we've got one uh, schedule change, which I'm excited to announce as uh, as well, but you can see we've got a, an all-star lineup. Uh, I'll start in the top and then you can jump in and cover some too. We got uh, Danny Harani from uh, Southern California who's on here. I know he's watching live with his whole team and he's uh, gonna be along the ride for the whole call. We got him batting cleanup at the end. You know, Danny's uh, Go, Danny. a serious closer. Uh, we've got Jeremy Forcier who's got the all-time most listened to videos here in the mortgage coach community. Um, he's coming on towards the end of the hour. Uh, we're kicking off with uh, my good buddy and uh, Superstar producer Josh Metal here, who's uh, ready to rock and roll right at 9.05. And uh, Wally uh, Elbieri out of Texas is on there as well. Um, next is Denise Donahue, who's got a, a family um, thing going on. So we've got Lori Richardson stepping in her place, which uh, I'm super excited about. And then uh, last but not least on the top row, we got Justin Brown. And so Justin is another super producer out of California and excited to have him on as well. All right, and then we also have Michelle Town, who's one of our co-hosts for our Friday Mastermind. Every Friday we're getting together. We have Stu Sweet from Northern California out of Berkeley, California, who works with a lot of online buyers and online realtors. He's gonna crush it. We've got Kelly Zitlow out of Scottsdale, Arizona, who's just got some of the best scripting when it comes to the entire borrower experience. We've got Rick Shear out of Boston, who's gonna kill it. I actually interviewed Rick uh, this Monday or this Tuesday, he was incredible. And then we have Nicole Solari. She is the only realtor on the group. She's only been a realtor for four years. She did almost 300 transactions in 2017, killing it uh, on the stages of um, Inman. And I think the biggest thing that makes her stand out is that her number one referral source is open houses. And she's going to give you scripts on how to uh, get more leads at open houses. So I'm fired up now. Well, and she's also going to be talking through how she is getting uh, referral, referring her lender over to her clients. I think that's going to be really critical for all of us to have to be able to better educate our realtors to refer us all better in this business. So um, I think we got a great lineup. They're going to be on here through the whole call. So hopefully you all be able to hang out with us um, as long as we are going. Um, we do have the chat up. So we're going to do our best to monitor that. We got a, you can't quite tell, but we got all sorts of tech going on here. Um, and we've got a bunch of you on Facebook Live too. So those of you who aren't getting onto um, the main Zoom as it as it maxes out, then we'll push people over to Facebook Live. So um, we're happy to have you all here and uh, really excited to kick it off uh, with Josh Metal. So why don't we bring up uh, one, Mr. Metal. One more house cleaning item. So Facebook Live is on my personal timeline. We put it there versus the Facebook group so you could share it. So if you know some mortgage friends that would love to listen in to this event live, feel free to go to Dane Savage on Facebook and share our Facebook Live. So with that said, let's bring in Josh. You know, uh, you know, it's kind of fun as we went through this, right? So we took a survey of uh, the Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind community on scripts that you want. And I think, you know, one of the things that you guys all love about Josh, right, on the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel, he's got his own channel within the channel um, because he's just so great at uh, scripting. And so um, we've got Josh talking about what's your rate and uh, why should I go with you over another lender? So I am going to um, be quiet. Let's uh, bring Josh's photo in, Dave, if you can help me with the technology here. Let's begin well, live. Well, actually, Josh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen 
so we can just get all you. Go ahead, my man. Yeah, can you hear me all right, Dave? We hear you perfectly. All right, we're rolling. So the questions are, uh, just to restate them, what's your rate and why should I go with you? Is that right? Absolutely. So as I was thinking about this, you know, I, I think there's a real dichotomy with rate choppers. And, and I think we need to first work on our inner game just a little bit before we work on the outer game. The outer game is the scripting. And as Jeremy said, you know, that is more important than marketing. Uh, but we also have to think a little bit about how we come into the conversation with clients, where our mindset is, where our beliefs are. And I think, I think there is a dichotomy with rate choppers where one group really cares about what interest rates are, and they think that it's going to be a, a pivot point or an impact on their ultimate wealth and success. And another group just doesn't know what other questions to ask. And so when I go into a, a call and the first question I get is, hey, what's your rate, what's your fees? The first thing I'm trying to figure out is which camp is this person in? Because these are two very, very different groups. And I may not want to work with a person in, in one particular group. But it's a natural question because it's hard to say, hey, Dave, are, are you going to take care of me? Uh, when, 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 I, when Xander and Aria are in the Penske and we're moving across the country to our new house, are there going to be a problem with my loan? Is it going to blow up? Are you going to return my emails? Are you going to be cool to work with? Those are all the things that I think a lot of people are actually thinking, but very few know how to ask that because we're, that's not really our culture, right? We don't talk about how's it going to feel to work with you. So the first thing that I think we need to keep in mind is that this conversation is way bigger than rate. Really what this conversation about is how are you going to take care of me? How are you going to provide an, a mortgage for experience for me and my family? And are we going to run into any landmines? So I'm automatically trying to enter into that conversation with a few questions that's going to be able to figure that out. So whenever I get a question, how's your rate? What are your fees? I'm, I'm going to immediately start responding to that with a question. So it would go something like this. And feel free to jump in if you want to add anything, uh, Todd. I heard you mentioned something there but it's going to go something like this well well dave have you been watching what's been going on in the interest rate market i seem you've seen what's happened since the end of 2017 well yes yeah i i, I have a little bit okay well let me explain where we are in the cycle because you you may not be writing an offer today so my rate today may may be really irrelevant let me explain to you a little bit about where we're going in the future in terms of interest rates find out a little bit more about your situation, and then let's talk about creating a loan program that's gonna have the least amount of cost during the time horizon that you plan to be in the home. And at that point, guards start to come down a little bit, and I've entered into the conversation something more than just rate and fees. I then usually go into a, just a very brief explanation, and I'll say, look, from 2007 to 2017, we had the Federal Reserve buying $4.7 trillion of mortgage-backed securities and treasury bills, artificially bringing interest rates down. That process has ended at the end of 2017, and now we're in a period where interest rates are going to revert to the mean or revert to the average, which is about seven and three quarters percent. I have a little graph that I use, and I'll actually send them while I'm on the email. I'll say, Dave, are you, are you at your email? Okay, cool. What's your email? Let me, let me send you this graph. And it's a graph of interest rates going back to 1960. And I'll say, look, the average is about seven and three quarters. We're in the process of going back to what I think is a more normalized interest rate range. So the reality is the sooner you find a home, the sooner we have you pre-qualified, the sooner we, we get you under contract and lock an interest rate, that's going to be the best interest rates you can provide. Not necessarily just the person who quotes you the best interest rate today, because you may be several months away from going under contract. Uh, and then from there, I start going right back. Once we've had that dialogue and they start thinking a little differently, I'll immediately go into the rest of my questions. So then in, built into my CRM, I've got my entire, I've got my entire set of questions. So then we're going to go into what's your price range? How much down? What property type? Hey, tell me a little bit about your family. How old are your kids? What are their names, by the way? Right. And then we start going through the process of at the end of that questions, I'm going to say, Hey, look, Dave, based on what I heard you say, what I really want to do is I want to create a total cost analysis for you because that's a tool that is going to allow me to prove to you 
to prove to you that one loan program over another is the lowest amount of cost over the time horizon you told me that you were going to be in the house. The next step in that process, of course, is just to take a few minutes and complete our client questionnaire. I'll text you our mobile app right now. You can do that in 10 minutes. And by the end of that process, if you filling out our client questionnaire, within 24 hours, we'll have a total cost analysis to you. I'll film a cool little video for you, the 60 second overview of the program. Then we'll jump back on the phone, make sure that we have the right loan program for, for you and your family and the time horizon you're gonna be in the home. How does that sound? That sounds fantastic. By the way, everybody, this is being recorded, so we're not gonna be repeating things, but this will be available in the YouTube channel. And Josh, you are killing it. By the way, just so people realize how often you, you, know, you deliver that conversation, how many loans are you doing? How many conversations like this are you having per week, per month? Uh, loans doing uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 25, depending on, depending on the month. Um, I, I couldn't count the exact number of conversations, but I can tell you from 8.30 till 11.30 noon or one, I am nonstop on the phone having conversations with clients and, and prospecting for two to four hours a day religiously. And so lots of those conversations. So the one point I want to make to everybody listening, if you're new in the business, if you're closing less than five, less than six loans a month, what Josh just told you is a better script. So listen to this over and over. And it's, it's what I believe some of the best scripting I've ever heard in the industry when it comes to building rapport and being unique. He doesn't sound like every other loan officer. He's delivering something unique and valuable. Anything you want to add? You know, hey, Josh, will you uh, be willing to share your graph? We're getting lots of requests for that. And then we can push it out into the Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind group. Certainly. I'll email it to you. Awesome. Thank you. Good. We'll make that available in the Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind Group. So stay tuned on that. Well, we got, do we have more time or? We yeah, we still got, we still got time. So let's go with your, how are you comparing yourself to the other lender script? Yeah. So uh, I do often ask people, you know, tell me a little bit about your family. And that might sound like an odd question, but depending on how many people you have in your family and the age and what's going on in your professional career, I can help you kind of prognosticate or estimate how long you're going to be in the house. It helps. It's valuable information. So I start going, uh, digging in for that information a lot of times in the very initial phone call. And I'm taking that information down in my CRM, obviously. And at the end, I'll, I'll ask something like, hey, Dave, t tell me when you make a decision on a mortgage lender, what, what's most important to you? And, you know, those answers will range one way or the other. And then, but I'll always wrap by saying, hey, look, let me tell you what's most important to me. What's most important to me is that when your two children, and usually I have their names down, when your two children uh, are packing up their belongings and your family's having that really cool moment of getting everything boxed up and excitement to move into the next house, the most important thing to me is that your loan has been clear to close for a week and that you have zero concerns that there's gonna be any problems with getting keys on time or early. And so my commitment to you is that we will close your loan in blindingly fast amount of time. We will have, we will have the loan closed well before you wanna close. And I don't expect you to take my word for it. What I would love you to do is follow the link I'm gonna email you to check out our Google reviews and take 60 seconds and review the Google reviews. There's no way to fabricate these. You have to log in with your Google login and password. These are hundreds of clients that have written into us and told us about their experience. And I want you to feel comfortable and rest easy that that's the kind of experience we're gonna build for you and your family. Love, love that, Josh. Hey, I wanna, I wanna call out a couple things. One, notice everybody how Josh isn't selling a program, a rate, a fee, a monthly payment. He's finding out their goals. He's connecting with them emotionally. And then he's using a total cost analysis to show how to execute on that. Uh, and I love this quote, Josh. This is one from one of our past interviews. Uh, by the way, anybody watching today's call, I have got a LinkedIn post. I'll put a link to that in chat. And if you're watching this on video, I'll put a link below. But it's got six other scripts from Josh. What you're seeing on the screen right now is one of them. You know, we don't have time to go through each one of these individually but we will make sure that you have these available to read. So Josh, anything else you want to add? Anything else you think is important to the community 
um, before we bring in our next guest? You know, I would just finish with what I started with, which was most people ask what's your rate and what's your fee because it's their default. They don't know what other questions to ask. That may actually be fifth or sixth in, in their priority level, but it's really uncomfortable for most people to talk about feelings. So you, 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 have to, you have to answer that question with a question and then get back to your normal sales protocol and then get back to how you're going to serve them and take care of them and create an option that's going to have the lowest cost over the time horizon there in the home. So I'll, I'll wrap with that. Yeah, well, I, I love it. And one thing didn't come out of this is just how committed Josh and his team are to speed. You know, this is a quote from one of our interviews earlier, but it's like speed is king and 2018 like never before. So, you know, your scripting, using tools like the mortgage coach have never been more important to going from confusion to clarity with clients. Todd, any last thoughts or questions before we wrap it? No, I think the other part is, and, and Dave kind of hit on it, is that Josh does such a good job of connecting with the people on the phone, right? In this day and age, right, not enough of us are meeting with our clients. And if you're not meeting with clients, you've got to make sure that you connect with them personally, right? You got to connect the head to the heart. That's how you're going to win more deals. Use these scripts and just super excited, Josh, that you could make time because we know you're heading out of town. So thank you very much for uh, kicking us off with uh, some great scripts. Appreciate it, Josh. Hey, thanks for having me. And I can't uh, wait to hear everybody else's uh, comments. I look forward to learning from all of you. Love it. So two things before we bring in Lori Richardson. One, if you're watching from Facebook Live, if you get a takeaway, like if you hear a phrase, a quote that you want to remember, type it out. You know, put that in this Facebook Live thread. If you have a question for Todd and I, we will try to bring in some of those questions. So whether you post that in Facebook Live or you post that in Zoom, we are following that. So Todd, I'll leave it to you to bring in our next guest. Well, you know, I'm super excited, uh, appreciative that Lori uh, stepped in. She rearranged her schedule, which originally uh, was, was uh, overbooked and uh, is here. And, you know, uh, what I would say about Lori, we've got her talking about annual mortgage reviews and her scripts. And Lori is a, uh, a friend of mine for the past decade. And uh, I think there's a lot to learn because she's got such a personal touch and this has always been her unique selling proposition. So, uh, Lori, how are you? Great. Thanks for having me. Those scripts from Josh were amazing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, we would love you to kind of start off with, um, what, how you set up your annual mortgage review up front. Cause I know that you do that from your initial call with a client explaining to them how your client for life, uh, program works and how you're going to be there for the long haul. Um, and then follow that up with sort of what does that conversation look like? Because I think most people struggle with when they actually go to do that call, you know, how they're doing it and, you know, what else you think would be important for them to know. Absolutely. Well, like Josh said, um, this, you know, what we do for a living, um, we're not selling tinfoil, we're not selling shoes. We are helping people with, you know, probably one of the biggest financial decisions that they will ever make in their entire life. So for us, uh, you know, I, I just echo exactly what Josh said and that this is way bigger than rate and helping our clients go, even his last quote, going from, um, uh, from confusion to clarity is one of the biggest things that we can help them with. And so uh, I tell my clients, we always begin with the end in mind and that we really want to help. We, we really want to help you integrate this loan into the rest of your financial plan, which might sound a little uh, overwhelming at the very beginning, especially if you're a first time home buyer, but we're going to be with you every step of the way as we work through this process. And, uh, and if we really do our, our job right, uh, this is not a one and done thing for us. And by this time, similar to Josh, we're spending a lot of time up front understanding who they are. Um, I want to know their kids' names. I want to know their pets' names. I want to know kind of what this is look, looking like. Um, we're creating the, the total cost analysis, and I use a lot of, of Josh's scripting as well. And as we're finishing our call, um, and we've said, you know, hey, here's what's important to us in this. Um, we're telling our clients that um, if we do our job correctly, our job really begins after closing. We want the closing process to be extremely seamless and stress-free. But our, my job, I see, is really starting um, you know, after we close. And from there, it's our job to help, uh, help them manage one of the largest debts we know they're going to 
they're going to have. And I'll usually say, hey, unless you buy a, a really big boat or a business, this is probably going to be one of your biggest financial investments. And we take that really seriously. And most people that do what or who do what I do for a living just provide the debt. And then, you know, you may or may not hear from them again. But I want you to know that we are really committed to making sure that you are always in the right loan at the right time. Lots of things change over the years. And we really want to make sure that we're, um, we're with you as you move through those changes. So we'll also continue to monitor the market as things continue to evolve to see if there's an opportunity uh, to save you money or to share a new strategy that will help you build your wealth or you know, build wealth over time. And um, so we really want to you know, try to help you um, make sure that you're always in the right loan at the right time, I guess is the bottom line there. So we do sometimes talk about, you know, if rates drop, we're going to, we're going to call you and, um, uh, you know, do a no cost refinance. I'll save that script for another time. But what we're really trying to get across here is that this is not one and done. I never, ever, ever use the word or the term lender for life. I just don't like it. I don't know why that is. Um, but we are really saying this is, you know, this is the, really the beginning and not the end. And we're going to be with you uh, through this, this process. And if your friends or family have questions as you move through the process, we are here to be a resource to them as well. So just kind of trying to introduce the fact that um, now, you know, as you create your personal wealth creation team, uh, you've got a, a great mortgage banker on it. You probably have a great real estate agent on it. And as we continue to grow, we may want to add a financial planner or a CPA or somebody to help you with long-term care, um, please know we've got great resources that I trust will take great care of you when the time is right. Love it. Love it. And I know you do such a great job of the connection piece, again, that, that we talked about getting to know them. And then give us a little bit of insight that a year goes by or, and then what, how, do you, how do you initiate that call and what does that call sound like? Yep. So we, are, um, we have a, a a process that um, puts this in front of them. We're keeping in touch with them, obviously, you know, every month as we go through. Uh, we do a, a six month happy anniversary email that's just kind of a little fun one. That's a fun picture of a, a house that Hannah, my daughter, decided she wanted to um, live in when she was, uh, when she was little and we were kind of warning them or prepping them for that one year call. And then when we get to that point, um, we are emailing them a video. Um, I just have a video that I update quarterly that, uh, that goes to all of our clients and just says, Hey, I can't believe it's been a year. So excited to chat with you and catch up. As promised, we will do an annual mortgage review for you. We attach a copy of our annual mortgage review questionnaire to that email. And I just say, hey, you don't, there's no need to actually sit down and fill this questionnaire out. But I do think there's huge value in just reviewing it um, so that we can talk about any of the changes that have happened in, you, in your life in the last 12 months and any changes we're anticipating in the next 12 to 24 months, just so that we can make sure that your mortgage is still serving you. So that's kind of the prep for the call. Um, and then we call, I don't know how many people on this call have read Ninja Selling, one of my absolute favorite sales and real estate books. Larry Kendall hit it out of the park with this book. And he uh, introduced to me a couple of years ago, uh, the five magic questions. And so when we are actually following up with that call, um, first we're connecting. I Like Josh, we've got their, their, their names, their kids. Um, I'm asking specifically, uh, Todd, how is Tara? How are the girls doing at Barnard? How's Giselle doing we're actually you know connecting on on from that perspective and just kind of finding out what's going on in their world and then it's a great time to kind of what we just integrate the five magic questions into our conversation and those are um, so what are let's just you know kind of go back to the basics and if there isn't anything really that major majorly has changed sometimes we're hearing you know we had twins we need to move we need a bigger yard um, you know we need something with a basement and we can obviously help there but even on the those calls where they're like, you know what, Lori, we love our home. We love our neighbors. Everything is great. It's only been a year. The rate is great. Um, then it's a great time to just kind of weave these questions into our conversation. And those are, uh, the first one is, so what are your long-term plans for this house? And then I just kind of shut up and let them start talking. And sometimes they'll say, well, you know, it's a really good question. Um, I think we're going to be here until the kids graduate from college and then we're probably going to empty nest or downsize or buy a second home in Vail. Uh, but it gets us talking about what their real estate goals and dreams are. The second one is with some of the lowest rates, and sometimes I'll ask either one of these, with some of the lowest rates in our lifetime, are you living in the home you want to be in? 
I love that question because it really, especially for somebody who have, I've not talked to in a while, it's a really soft way to say, hey, rates are still great. I, I joke that, you know, when I got into the business rates, we're at 18 and a half percent. And even though like Josh, I do believe that we're going back to a more normalized uh, environment. We're not there yet. So with some of the lowest rates in our lifetime, are you living in the home you want to be in? And I, sometimes I don't get an instant answer to that question. Like, you know what, we're not, we need to move tomorrow. But it really starts them thinking about what should we be looking at. And because real estate is such a great part of their, typically part of their wealth strategy, it gives us the opportunity to kind of open up that, that, that conversation. And I can't tell you how many times, two weeks, three weeks, two months later, somebody will call me back and go, you know, you asked me that question and we need to talk. So that's question number two. The third one, if you could wave a magic wand and live anywhere, where would that be? Again, another great question to get them thinking about that. I think as, you know, probably as Americans and, and as humans, really, we don't get a lot of, um, nobody really asks us, hey, if we can wave a magic wand, what do you really want? And so that's a great question to just kind of open up that dialogue. Um, is real the fourth question is is real estate part of your wealth plan and again that may or may not, may not be necessary based on what we've already talked about but it gets us talking about um uh, you know what their their the value of their real estate is and what that looks like we forget sometimes that other professionals like uh, their stockbroker their investment advisor gives them an idea of you know what their uh, assets look like on a quarterly basis i think an annual mortgage review is kind of our chance to say hey we're you know in your court uh, as you're building your wealth creation team we're a part of that and we want you to know the value of your home because we're giving them access to you know the sold home alert or something that gives them an idea of value uh, and then the last question is, what are your dreams for your kids? I love that question because it, then we can start talking about um, what Larry calls wake up money. And that is buying investment properties for your kids that uh, even if you, uh, they continue to, um, uh, you know, they essentially can purchase real estate and have, have it paid off by the time the kids are ready to, to go to college. And while someone else is making the payment that entire time, and it's just a great strategy. So the, wow. hopefully those five magic questions help you connect back to those people and not feel like you're selling something because you're really not. We, we love it. You did a great job, Lori. Appreciate you unpacking all those scripts. And just to stay on schedule, uh, unless you have anything quick to say, I'm going to bring on Michelle Town. Nope. Awesome. Thank you so much. Grateful for your time. Michelle Town, we appreciate you. And Michelle is an amazing mortgage coach professional. Uh, Average is $100 million a year in volume, so she's killing it. Uh, works with a lot of online buyers, kills it with first time home buyers. And, and Michelle, I know you wanted to talk about your cost of waiting script. So if you could give us some of your scripting around to your cost of waiting. We can't hear you, Michelle. Sorry, I muted myself, you know. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. Um, happy, gosh, is it Wednesday? Happy Wednesday. Um, so great stuff, Lori and Josh. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so glad this is recorded because I don't have enough time to take a lot of notes. Um, I wanted to go straight into the cost of waiting. Um, I have a couple scripts we can talk about, but this one is probably the most important. Um, and I think it's, it's taken what um, Mortgage Coach has done last year. There's a sample of the cost of waiting and I've kind of just added another tier to it. So um, most times I'm getting first time home buyers that want to wait because they feel they can save more money. They feel that um, they, their payment's too high. Oh, I think I lost video. Um, sorry, I, I lost video. Um, no, we still have seen and, this, Oh, you do? Okay, good. Um, okay, um, so um, and I wanted to, I wanted to find something that I could do to kind of distract them from that question of, you know, I, I need to wait or I need to do this. So I wanted to give them real numbers that made sense. So we created this cost of waiting calculator that I um, actually will send to the client and I'll say, listen, this is just a sample. What I'd like to do is take this and convert it into a total cost analysis so you can actually see it. And I call it, I call it a see it and feel it. I feel like when people see it and they can, you know, play around with the numbers that they're really happy with it. So this cost of waiting, the script is basically, you know, with the first quarter complete in 2018, 
we've seen, obviously, we have, we have facts now. I have a graph from Freddie Mac that I use that states in October of 2017 interest rates, the average interest rate on a 30-year fix was 3.75%. Today, as of the end of the quarter in March, the average interest rate for a 30-year fix was 4.5%. So what, and I, and I go, what does that mean to you? And cause I always ask the questions. I like to engage them. What does that mean to you? And I go, I don't know. And I'll say, Hey, do me a favor, open up that cost, that calculator I just sent you. And let's look at what that means to you. And what I'll do is I'll plug in and we'll say, okay, you want to buy a house for $650,000 and you're going to put 20% down. And the rate in October when you started shopping was 3.75. And I'll say your payment was $2,600 a month. Let's just say, um, Actually, I'm going to use real numbers because I have the calculator open. Um, your interest rate at that, or your payment at that time was um, $2,791. Now, fast forward to where we are today, and that rate is now 4.5%. That payment now is $3,273. So that's a $500 difference in payment. Um, those numbers might be skewed because my calculator is not working for me right now. Um, then what I do is I give them that to that in a dollar amount. And I say, okay, so did you realize that that payment of, let's just call it $300 per month that went up over the next two years, that $300 is going to cost you, um, so 300 times 24 is, it's going to cost you $7,200 just in a mortgage payment. I said, but even more so, I said, let's take a look at that same house you wanted to buy you told me in our intake call that you didn't want your mortgage payment to be over $2,700 per month. So what does that mean to you in dollars? So this now, by waiting these seven months or eight months and with interest rates going up, that payment, to keep your payment, at, it's now $44,000 more in down payment. And then I asked the question, can you stay $44,000 in seven months? I know I can't. Um, but it kind of puts things in perspective to them of saying, wait a second, get them off saying, well, if I save more down payment, because most people don't know that dollar for dollar doesn't work out in mortgages. Um, we all know when we're looking, you know, we're all great structures where we're looking at a file and we see the debt ratios at 52%. We know putting more down payment isn't going to be the answer. It's going to be paying off a debt because that debt payment is going to give us more volume to buy. Um, and I find when I'm speaking to clients, same thing that Josh was saying, they don't know the questions to ask. So when you put it to that in, in that perspective, it makes them engaged in the process and they sit there and go, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that. And then what I do is I take it to the next step and I say, I'm going to send you a cost of a, a total cost analysis and I'm going to put in October. I'm going to put in today and I'm going to put in how much more down payment you had to put down to keep your payment at what you wanted originally in October. And that is eye opening to them when they see that their cash to close went from $40,000 to $104,000 eye opening. And I am happy to share this calculator with anybody. I will share one of my scripts with anybody. Um, I just think it takes it to a different level. We're in an, increasing interest rates and we're in an increasing at least in southern california an increasing property value so we have two double whammies working against us right now and so what i'm trying to do is make that now work for me and and get people off off trying to save more money for down payment because if they do that some of our first-time home buyers aren't going to be able to buy they're going to price themselves out of the market michelle that was awesome we're getting flooded with people that want to link to your cost of waiting analysis so if you could forward that to us or even put it in chat. Uh, also, everybody who's a Mortgage Coach member on this call, uh, this Thursday at 9 o'clock Pacific, we'll dedicate our weekly Thursday training to how to do the total cost analysis or how to do the cost of waiting analysis in our total cost. So, Michelle, you killed it. Um, real quick, before you jump, we want to hear your six-month script. You know, what does it sound like? You say you follow up with your clients um, at the six months point. Give us a feel for what that sounds like. Sure. Um, I, I am very much like Lori. I, I keep very in touch with my clients. They get a 45-day call right after the loan closes just to make sure, hey, 
Um, you know, have you got your first payment? And make sure they're not getting overwhelmed with paperwork. And then it's a six-month script, and it just says, hey, I wanted to, again, thank you guys so much for using the town group for your mortgage planning needs. Um, we really hope you're able to exceed your expectations with the level of service that we provided. And by that time, we've usually had a review by them as well. And I said, I can't believe it's already been six months. Can you? Um, and as a part of our service to our family, because we always consider you family, we want to check in and see how things are progressing. How's your servicing going? How's, um, have you gotten any unusual tax bills that we need to help explaining? You know, remember, our job doesn't end when your loan closes. Please let us know if there's anything that we can do for you and your family. That was awesome. Awesome, as always. And those of you who aren't familiar with the Friday Mortgage Coach Mastermind, Productivity Mastermind call that we do, Michelle's one of our co-hosts on there, and you always just crush it with uh, awesome scripting. So I uh, really appreciate you taking time to be here, and uh, we know you've got a tight schedule, so thank you very much. Yeah, but Michelle, thanks. Make sure you say hi to Cindy. We're glad that she, uh, you know, Cindy Ertman, her coach, <laughs> getting ready to go to a coaching mastermind session. So have, have a good one. And by the way, if you could share that link, we're getting blown up for requests. And if you're watching the video recording of this, I will put a link down below. You're watching this in YouTube. In the description, there'll be a link to Michelle Town's cost of waiting analysis. Michelle, thank you so much. Bye guys, have a great one. All right. So a couple things before we bring in our next guest. Um, we see a lot of folks watching this on Facebook Live. I would love more questions and more takeaways. So if you have a question or a takeaway, share it. Also keep the questions coming in comments. And with that said, we've got our next guest, Mr. Wally Elderberry. What's up, Wally? Hey, how are we, gentlemen? We are fantastic, my man. So everybody wants to know how to get meetings with mega producers. And being the fact that you've, you've so successfully scaled your personal team, uh, and I know you have a focus of working with mega agents, we want to hear what it sounds like to get a meeting with them. You know, what, is, what does that cold call sound like? And then, you know, we want to know what it sounds like when they ask you to, you know, pay for marketing. How do you respond to that? And then, Todd, anything you want to add? Well, I think just anything of, of what those relationships look like when it's uh, cold versus warm, because I think that's a huge opportunity in the market for a lot of loan officers to get new relationships. So I'm going to sit here and study alongside of everyone else. You, you, you guys are way too flattering. So thank you for that. All right. Um, well, a couple of things I want to share real quick. Uh, cold calling, absolutely 110% don't do. Uh, Todd Duncan challenged me years ago about how much business I was leaving on the table from uh, listing agents. So if you have a mega agent in your town and you're even a halfway decent loan officer, loan producer, most likely within a 30 day window, 60, 90 day window, you're going to run into the listing agent on the other end of the other end of the, uh, the, the listing agent on the purchase. So the zero cold calls period. Now, if I don't run into a listing ag uh, an agent I want to prospect to during the, those 90 days, I reach out to the title companies. Hey, who, who do you know that works at A, B, and C mega agent office or market center or office in there? You, use your other sources. You know, the, the, the value that you can, the title company gives me is huge. So hopefully you can write this down, but there's three major things that um, Gary Keller actually said this once. Um, in, a, uh, in a class that I took from him. He said that there's every business, no offense or buts, if it's Apple, if it's a real estate team, if it's a mortgage team, if it's mortgage coach, whatever. There's three major departments. The first one is lead gen, sales, operations. Lead gen, sales, operations. So when I'm dissecting a listing, a, a mega agent team, I'm trying to figure out where, is there, where are they really strong? and where are they weak? So I'm asking qualifying questions to find out where they're having hurdles. So for instance, if, if an, a mega agent team has, has a difficulty in operations, so what I would, I would do in that situation is customize the conversation around, well, you know, what we pride ourselves on is serving your operations team just as much as we serve your clients. So I will personally, my team will personally reach out on a weekly basis to touch base with your transaction coordinator and let them know specifically where we are in the process before they even ask, and we'll schedule a weekly call with them. Um, some some mega agents, mega agents prefer us to do a twice a weekly call, which you know will 110% accommodate to. Uh, if it's if it's sales, well, I've got a great 
scripting role play person on my team that actually does a great job of helping real estate agents convert more business. Believe it or not, he used to be a realtor himself. And then from there, then we set up a weekly role play and script practice with that team. The third thing is the lead gen. You know, the, well, I also have a lead generation manager on my team that actually goes in there and customizes CRMs, customizing calling systems, customizing technology for the mega agent team. And if you think about it candidly, if we go in there and do all this heavy lifting for them, and we do loans phenomenally, then at the end of the day, why, why on God's green earth would they go with a different lender? Unless that other lender is offering them money, okay? So mega agents will get 5,000 a month from the lender, $10,000 a month from the lender, and they'll call it uh, marketing costs, okay? Which kind of leads me to the next question that you want me to answer, Dave, unless you, any, any more questions on the first one? No, keep it rolling. All right, cool. So the second thing is, second question is, hey, how do you, what do you say to a mega agent when a partner that you're partnering with asks you to, to do lead generation or spend money with them, co-marketing, whatever the case? You know, the, that's the whole, one of the main reasons we built the, the ISA team, the inside sales agent team, where we convert leads for our, our mega agent teams and we refer them back uh, clients that they've not been able to speak to from their leads. So one thing that we focus on there is that, hey, you know, if you look at how many referrals that we got, you did 350 referrals last month and we were, or leads to us, we were able to refer you back nine clients, nine, nine clients. Well, six of those you guys met face to face with. Three of those you got, you guys went under buyer's rep or listing agent. With. What's your average commission? Uh, let's just say they, they say $12,000 $12, a month. So if 12000 I mean, I just, you still got $36,000 in commissions I just made you, my team. What is the other lender offering you? Is it 5000 Is it 10000 So do you want me to keep the other 20 some odd thousand? How do you want to structure this? So the value that I've built on the foundation of my team allows me to have those conversations. The other factor is, I don't know how it is in other markets, but Dallas-Fort Worth is crazy, crazy, crazy sell, a seller's market, not a buyer's market. So there's a ton of multiple offers out there, like every deal is a multiple offer. So one thing that we pride ourselves on also is we do the TBD process up front. We collect all the clients, paycheck stubs, W-2s, bank statements, submit them through underwriting up front. Well, that allows me to have a conversation with a mega agent and say, hey, the previous lender you're working with has, which a, a Dallas Fort Worth average of lenders out there that I've talked to, they're about a, every, if they make 10 offers on a property, then they'll, they capture maybe three contracts of a weekend because they'll lose other offers or cash offers or bigger bidders. So they're batting a 30% ratio. My team is at a 62% ratio. 62% of the offers that my agents send in get accepted from the listing agent. So my question to you, Ms. Mr. and Mrs. Mega Agent, how efficient do you want to make your, your, uh, your, your sales team, your agents? If you've got a sales team, your agents that actually are batting 60% of multiple offers instead of batting 30% of multiple offers, how much, money, how much more money are they going to make? How much more money are you going to make with your split by using, utilizing my team's tools of having four underwriters on staff? Wally, yeah. love, love what you're saying. And I, again, I've interviewed you a lot of times, so I know just how tight your processes are and the fact that you deliver a total cost analysis to each and every client. Uh, anybody taking notes here, one of the reasons Wally's scripts work so well is because he executes so well. I mean, every single borrower gets this great scripting. They get this great total cost analysis presentation. He's helping families go from confusion to clarity. And his realtors really look at him as a conversion partner. They know that, yeah, Wally closes loans on time and we love to work with him, but he creates urgency and he has a better conversion than every other loan officer that I could be doing business with. Todd, anything you want to add? Well, I think that's the key, right? What, what you're hearing is Wally does a lot of the stuff really well that you all do as well, but he does a really great job of articulating that with his scripts to these partners. And so just remember that oftentimes, even though you know what you know, people that you're trying to do business with don't, and you just have to continue to go after that. And I love the fact, Wally, that up front, you said, I don't go after cold people, I go after warm people. And I think that's just a great reminder that you all have people that are that you see day in and day out that you don't always go after and target. So you've got to just be really vigilant and go after those folks. So 
Uh, you delivered just as we knew you would, Wally. Thanks so much. We know that you uh, have a super tight schedule as well, so we appreciate you uh, being around today. Yeah, and if you are still on the yeah, call Bart. and ask a question, feel free. You had something else you want to say, Wally? Just 10 more seconds real quick. Um, what the Jesse said, I focus on being a, a mega agents team, mega agents mortgage partner instead of their preferred lender. A lot of loan officers out there try to be the preferred lender. You want to be the mortgage partner, which you've got a partner in their business. The second last thing I want to say is the best loan officers that do 50 million, 100 million, 200 million, whatever the number are, they're not actually the best loan officers, they're the best marketers. If you focus on being the best marketer, you, your business your business will skyrocket. If you only focus on being the best loan officer, you, you're going to stay around the 15, 20 million, 25 million. Love, Love it. it. Great, Love great it. wisdom. And by the way, folks, some of my interviews with Wally have been some of the best. I'm going to take my favorite one. I'm going to put a link below. Wally, you rock. Thank you, brother. See you guys. Thank you. Right. Take care. So who do we have next? We got Rick Shear up next. So excited to uh, have our uh, Boston representative Rick Shear coming on. And, you know, we've done a lot of calls with Rick lately around um, lots of different, different things. He's been, he's such a great uh, member of the community. And what I loved is he said he's got a great five-star service experience. And I think as we are in this shifting market, where we've got digital experience is going to be the antithesis of that, right? That's the opposite. So, uh, all right, Rick, man, you're on. Let's tee it up and see how, how are you pitching your five-star experience? And then um, also we're going to have you talk a little about your annual mortgage review as you've uh, crushed it there as well. Man, guys, well, uh, you guys are killing it with this. Uh, I mean, we're only a couple people in and, and I'm already have a, two pages of notes. So, uh, I mean, you guys continue to add value to the, 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 uh, the group here. And so thank you very much for that. So yeah, I felt this was a, a pretty important uh, script uh, because we're using it more than ever right now. Um, and quite frankly, a lot of the deals that we're losing uh, right now are to some of the big banks, um, you know, Bank of the World and uh, some of the other um, companies out there that are really just buying the market and, and we're losing deals to. And, and we know that they don't offer a good process. So this script that I, uh, that I dubbed the five-star customer service experience, um, really we were giving this script as the loan was going, getting locked in and putting into process. And, you know, a couple months ago, we realized we need to move this script up. This script's gotta be actually, uh, you know, at pre-approval stage or uh, at rate, uh, when they're calling about rates of programs and products. So, you know, I'm gonna warn everybody uh, with this script that there's a little bit of risk with this script. Um, we essentially, are, um, are kind of going on a limb here. And so I want to warn anybody that's going to use it, really make sure you can back it up. Um, and, you know, the, um, so the script goes, goes like this, um, you know, Mr. Johnson, um, you know, as we're um, submitting your loan into process or uh, as we're pre-approving you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to commit to you and my, that my team and I are going to give you a five-star customer service experience. So you can just depend on the fact that when you move forward with us, we've set that bar at five star out of the gate. And, uh, and then I say, well, you know, let me allow you and allow me to, t uh, uh, to tell you what that means uh, to us. And I always say, you know, do you mind Mr. Johnson, if we over communicate with you, are you okay with that? And of course he's like, yeah, yeah. Over communicate away. Uh, I love that. And I always say we do that. We're going to do that in the three, essentially three different ways. Um, we use a, a software called Flowify. Um, it's a benchmark notification system. We've created 14 benchmarks that, as they hit certain benchmarks throughout the process, they're going to get an email. The attorney and the real estate agent are going to get an email, letting them know where they're at in the process. You know, I always say, Mr. Johnson, I never want you to wonder what's going to happen next. Where, uh, you know, who you know, what do you need to do? What's still outstanding? This process is going to show you that. We're also going to call you during certain milestones. We're going to call you when you have your approval, when you get your mortgage commitment, and uh, when we got your clear to close. We want to hear, you want you to hear that verbally from us before every, the world knows via email or your team knows via email. Um, and uh, we're also going to send you obviously customized emails throughout the process. So just know that we're going to over communicate with you. Mr. Johnson, listen, if you do not get that five-star customer service experience, or you feel like you're wondering what's going to happen, do me a favor. Just reach me, reach out to me, send me an email and say, Hey Rick, you know, 
um, um, looking to see what's next. And let me jump on it. Like, I really want to make sure we honor you in this. And if I have a staff member out or something like that, I just want to make sure that you are 100% taken care of throughout the process. You know, and then I say, um, you know, five-star customer service doesn't allow you, Mr. Johnson, to fall asleep and wake up in four weeks from now at a closing table. Like, we really need your help here. And so my request to you is that you will provide your documentation to us within 24, really 48 hours max from the time that we request it. Mr. Johnson, is that something you commit, can commit to, to this process? And 90% of the time we hear, yes, absolutely, I commit to you on that. And sometimes you hear, I'm going on vacation or I've got this work thing or, you know, it's going to be outside of, of that time frame, and, and I make note of that. But really getting that commitment from the borrower that they're in it with you to provide, uh, to make sure that this process goes smoothly. Um, so I get their commitment on that. Um, I always bring up as well, like you're buying real estate and there is a million moving parts. What I want you to know is sometimes things pop up. And I'm gonna knock on wood right now that you have the most smoothest process. But just know that if things pop up that you that and they're on the lending side, that we were gonna jump on it and we're gonna rectify it within 24 hours. So listen, you can go through your transaction just knowing that chances are nothing's gonna pop up. But if it does, know that we're right there, we're gonna jump on it and we're gonna make sure that it is uh, is taken care of ASAP. Um, you know, so so that's, you know, we, so my whole thing with this scripting is reverse engineer, right? Try to reverse engineer, reverse engineer everything in this process. So when things go sideways, you address it up front. You know, my team came to me about a year ago and said, hey, we're just not getting the response back from the client. They're not showing up to their own rescue. You know, they're asking us to close this week alone in two, two weeks. It's taking a week to send the stuff. So we've crafted this to, to go back and, and, and really make sure and get the client's buy-in up front. Because my team now, when it, we're out 48 hours, 72 hours or longer getting the client's documents, they have something to speak to. Like I've got an intake form where they check off a box saying they've committed to that. So now my team has say, hey, remember when you talked to Rick and there was that 24 to 48 hours? We really need that timing. Because I also commit that if they can do that 24 to 48 hours, then we will absolutely um, uh, be early on their mortgage commitment and be early on their clear to close. Rick, you are killing it. And folks, he's got some of the best scripts on the planet. Um, one of the top producers in the country, averages $100 million a year in volume. Rick, I know one of the things that really sets you apart from a lot of top producers is just how consistently you've been doing annual reviews. Yeah. And now again, folks, I've interviewed Rick on this and actually I have a LinkedIn article that goes to about a, a I don't know, about an 11 minute clip of one, our, of one of our interviews. So that is a reference for you. But I want to give everybody just like the opening minute to your annual review because that really does distinguish you and it's key to your success. What is that? Yeah. So I set the table. A lot of clients are like, well, I already know my race is great. I already know I'm at four, three and a half. Like, why am I on this call? And so I take care of that right off the bat. And so I, um, Mr. Johnson, you know, it's so great to talk to you. It's been a year, two years or five years, whatever the number is. Um, and it's really great to get on the phone with you. And here's my intention for this call. I'll tell you, it's probably going to be no more than 10 or 15 minutes. And I want to check in on you and Susie, see how the family's doing. I want to check in and see how the house uh, is for you. Any major repairs, any things you've done to it. I want to update my notes and just kind of where you're at in the house and how things that's working for you. Um, we're going to spend a couple of minutes just to compare where you're at today and, and where the market is today and just see if you're re in really great shape. And it, it looks like you are, but I want to spend a little bit of time there if you don't mind. Uh, and the fourth thing is, is I've got a couple of questions at the end of this that I want to end the call with. Um, Mr. Johnson, is, is that work for you? Are you, is that, is that good? And of course like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I always say, is there any burning questions that you have um, that you want to start the call off with that we can answer? And, um, and then, you know, and typically they say, yo, well, I'll save my questions to the end. And then we go through it, get in there. We uncovered their, um, you know, how the family is, are they adding, subtracting, you know, are they getting divorced? What's happening with the family? How the house is, are they growing out of it? Is it a, um, uh, do they looking for an addition? I get a lot of people ask me about home equity lines of credit on this, in this section. 
because they want to do some things to the property and they know they have the market appreciation. And so now I'm doing a total cost analysis on getting a home equity line of credit for a uh, hundred thousand dollars in a raising rate environment, or maybe going up a quarter in mortgage rate and locking everything down on a, um, uh, on a 30, on a 30 year fixed. Um, then the, um, then we check in on what, what's going on with their mortgage. Maybe there's some room to do something there. And then the four questions at the end that I always ask every single time is um, scale of one to 10, 10 being the best rate your people, the advisors in your life. How is your financial planner? One to 10 CPA, estate plan, an insurance agent. I ask them, I shut up. I wait till the answer after they're done with the four, I go back and I refer them. I would say 40% of the time I'm referring to all four. Uh, I would say 60 to 70% of the time I'm referring to at least one or two. So um, I'm able to uncover a ton of context to get a ton of business back to those, uh, those partners there. That was so awesome. So a couple things I'll throw out there, you know, number one is, is that I love the fact that you're addressing the problems up front, right? I feel like loan officers who are willing to do that are comfortable enough with, with that conversation with their clients are always going to win because they're not going to be surprised later. Um, second thing is if you want to know, Dave already mentioned it, uh, Rick's, process for annual mortgage reviews and how he does it using technology. Um, look in the mortgage coach mastermind productivity group. Um, we've got it in there. And I just love the fact that you're using that mortgage review as an opportunity for meeting new referral partners and for creating referrals to your existing partners in the other areas outside of real estate. So uh, thank you, Rick, you uh, crushed it and uh, take it away, Dave. Thanks, yeah, so on the screen right now, I actually have one of Rick's scripts that I pulled from our LinkedIn article. So, I know it's just flashy. You don't have time to write it down. Remember, this is recorded and we will provide links to this stuff. But here's one of the scripts that he uses to set the table. So it is time for the one and only Jeremy Forcier, monster mega producer, leads a team, also leads a region. Uh, Jeremy's interviews have been some of the most watched interviews of all time. What's up, Jeremy Forcier? What's up, dogs? How you guys doing? Good, thanks for making time in between meetings to come in and share some awesome scripts. Totally, man, I'm stoked, happy to be here. So um, where would you like me to start? Yeah, so you know that interview that you and I last did where I think I titled it, it's time to work hard and smart, harder and smarter than you've ever worked before. Yes. Uh, the way you close that out in terms of your cold calling, you know, your, your cold calling scripts, and I do believe that there's a lot of loan officers on here that are new, they're not hitting their numbers, and they do need to be cold calling realtors. Um, again, you're a top producer and you're still cold, cold calling realtors. So help us understand your scripting around cold calling agents. Sure. Um, so first of all, uh, you, everyone has to cold call forever. So everyone write that down. That's lesson number one, is that it's not like you arrive somewhere and like people are carrying you around on chariots, feeding you grapes, and you, they're just giving you loans. It, it, you, you have to cold call because every relationship, they all have seasons. Some last four seasons, some last one season, some last years of seasons over and over again. So that's why it's so important to always cold call. Um, so as far as the structure of the cold call, th this is uh, not only for just cold calling, but for any um, time that I'm dialing, whether it's consumers, realtors, financial planners. Um, I think that the reason why we're, we have so much aversion to it is that we're, we don't know what to say. That's what we tell ourselves. I don't know what to say. So I follow this very simple process and I wrote it down right here, right before I logged on. I will send, I think I've talked about this before, but this is how I do it. Before I start dialing, I write down, identify yourself equals, okay? I know this sounds really elementary. You guys know that I'm a simple fifth grade blue collar hustler, okay? So I write, I write down identify yourself equals, and I'd write my name, Jeremy Forcier, okay? So that way I know when I look at it, I will start my call with, hello, Todd. This is Jeremy Forcier from People's Home Equity. And I don't just start rambling, okay? Um, second thing that I wrote down here is purpose, purpose of the call. I think it's really important to come up with a purpose of your call before you start calling, okay? So let's assume that the purpose of my call is to invite them to a lunch and learn, okay? That would be the purpose of my call. Identify yourself. Hi, this is Jeremy Forcier from People's Home Equity. 
purpose of your call. The purpose of my call is that I'm hosting a lunch and learn on 1031 exchange and the updates with new tax laws. You guys get the point, right? So then the third part would be close. I write down close equals um, um, when the next time is that we are going to connect. So that depends on how the conversation goes. Um, if they want to make an appointment with me, the close would be great. I'll see you at this date, this time, and I'll send you an email. Um, if they say I'm not interested, I'd say, hey, I'm still going to follow up with you from time to time. You can expect a call from me every other week. So if you need anything between them, please let me know. Have a great day. Okay. So if we put this all together, this is what it sounds like, right? Hi, this is Jeremy Forcier from People's Home Equity. The purpose of my call is that I'd like to invite you to a lunch and learn on 1031 exchanges with the updated tax laws. The event is on May 14th at 3 p.m. at McVoy Ranch, and I would love for you to come. Are you available? That's it, okay? If they say yes, I say great. If they say no, I say awesome. Would you like to get together for a cup of coffee at another time that's more convenient that I could share the information with you? So a lot of it is just knowing what to say and then when they say no, you, you need to close again and again and again until they either hang up on you, which won't happen, that's our fear, or you're just gonna set up another future time to let them know when you're gonna follow up, even if they don't want you to. So Jeremy, real, real quick, I think one of the things that's so powerful about how you roll is you call with clarity, you know what you're doing, but then you've got counter punches. And, and I think that those, those counter punch, yeah, right? Like Rocky. Uh, you got your jab, your jab, and your right hook. And so I know when we did that interview, and by the way, folks, even though you're hearing greatness right now, the interview I did called Time to Work Harder and Smarter, another great call to listen to. But talk about those counter punches. Give us a few more examples of counter punches, knowing that you're going to have to hit two or three before it really. Sure. Um, so, so the key to counter is being clear first up front, right? I just want to keep emphasizing that. Because if you only focus on the counters, you're never gonna be present in the conversation. You're literally gonna be thinking about what you're gonna say if they do this or if they do this. And it's really, really important that you are present and engaged. It's something that I struggle with naturally, okay? That's why I do this silly thing, is because I really struggle with slowing my brain down, okay? So I just don't wanna overlook that. Now, when you get into a fight, if someone punches you and you don't punch them back, what's gonna happen, Dave? You lose. You're gonna lose. So the way I see it is that, yeah, you better be ready to fight. This is a fight, man. You gotta throw punches, scratches, kicks, ankle locks, whatever you gotta do, eye gouge. You have got to use everything that you have in your ability to try to close this person to meet with you. Number one, because it's what's right for them. And number two, because if you don't, your kids aren't gonna eat dinner. And that's really simple for me. So that's the way that I, I process it in my mind. It's like a survival mechanism, all right? So here are some counters, okay? These are um, typical responses that I get and that I'm sure that we all get uh, from whether it's an agent or whatever, whoever will cold call, okay? So here's, here's the number one, is that, oh, hey, thank you, I'm really busy. Okay, that's number one. I'm really busy. My counter always to that is awesome. I only work with busy people. When would be a good time for us to meet? Simple. Okay. Simple, man. Here's another one that we all get all the time. Okay. Oh, uh, hey, I'm with someone right now. I go, oh my gosh, I want to teach you how to be engaged with people because I would never pick up my phone if I was with your client. Okay. You guys have to have fun. It's If it's not fun, I'm not interested in it. Right. I've used that many times. I've had a um, site visit with 10 loan officers here that were shadowing me and I just called for two hours and they were like, dude, you say that to people? And I'm like, well, yeah. How ridiculous is it to pick up the phone and go, hey, I'm, sh I'm with someone right now. No, either A, you're a liar, or B, I can help you fix that problem, okay? Because you should never do that, right? Um, here's another one that we get a lot of times, okay? This will resonate. Hey, Jeremy, thank you so much, um, but I'm, I have a lending long-term re lending relationship, and I'm really, really happy right now with it, um, so, but thank you for your offer. That's the easiest one, I think, um, to number one, bow down from, but number two to close, okay? So it's this weird dichotomy. So uh, how I approach that always, if someone said, hey, I have someone I'm working with, long-term relationship, blah, 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 blah. This is my answer every time. That doesn't surprise me, Dave. 
great agents always have great lending relationships. And that's exactly why I'm calling you. I'd love to get together regardless. I have no expectation of you working with me, um, but I'm busy in the market. So you're gonna be seeing more and more of my pre-approval letters on your listings. And I think it's really important whether we work together right now in three days or three years, that you understand the process so you can confidently let your seller know that I'm a professional and they don't have to worry about the loan. Okay. So that's my secret one, by the way, I'm sprinkling you guys that I've been using for the last four months, killing it with it. Like it's, it's great that, what do they say? They're like, okay, <laughs> you know, I mean, no <laughs> expectation. Da, 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 da. If they push back again on that, okay. Um, what I usually say is, hey, well, I'm gonna follow up with you in a couple of weeks regardless. Um, I do have a guaranteed on-time close where I pay sellers $1,000 a day. So if any of your sellers are interested in that type of guarantee, let me know. Wow. And they're like, wait, what? What'd you do? You, you guarantee? And I do, by the way, you guys. Of course, there's three asterisks that come with it, but that's the whole point. I want to get in front of them and explain the asterisks. Okay, these are the guidelines. I promise this if this happens, right? So, um, I mean, I can keep going, Dave. I don't know. There, there's well, a well, I want. I mean, first of all, we can keep going, and maybe we should do an interview, go deeper on this. I do want to get because you have some of the best total cost analysis scripting, and how you bring that into the realtors. Especially, you know, as it, as you position it around, oh, communication is important to you. So, if you could just provide some quick scripting around how you integrate the total cost analysis into your realtor partnership conversations. Awesome, man! Happy to do that, and I'm going to pull up a response that I literally got yesterday. Okay, so um, basically, there's two that I'm going to go with here. One is for the realtor, and then one is for the client. Okay, and they're both equally as important. So. Uh, with the realtors, especially when you're first meeting with them, um, one of my questions that I ask everyone is like, what are your top three non-negotiables when you're in a relationship? And it usually 99% of the time results around communication. All three of them, by the way, not just two or not just one. So um, I usually let them know that, hey, you know, with, with all uh, people that we work with, I'm huge on communication. And I feel that uh, there's so many different ways to communicate. Um, some people are auditory, uh, some people are visual, some people are tactile. I like to like literally communicate with everyone in every single way. That way we can make sure that if any questions come up that I can answer it. So I use um, uh, this uh, app called The Mortgage Coach and I'm gonna include you and send you some examples of what they look like so you can see what your buyer is gonna experience. And it's literally a presentation of different loan options with me walking them through it line by line via video. Um, this allows them to process the information on their own time, ask better questions, and have 100% clarity at all times. And so that's my script for the realtor. And I usually send them a, a copy of one later that day or the next day after our appointment so they can see an example of one. Um, here is a response that I got yesterday. This is from an agent I've been working with for about six months now. We've closed four deals together. She emailed me back because I include, by the way, agents on every single TCA that I do for their borrower, every single one. I always, always, always include the agent. Uh, response was, oh my gosh, I love you so much. I wish that other people would communicate like this. This is absolutely amazing. I love your video presentations, okay? It took three minutes, guys. It's not hard, all right? Now, with the client, it's really important to set the expectation up front when you're talking to them that here's the process, and part of my process is I'm gonna create a video presentation for you with multiple options. And it may seem confusing, but I'm gonna make it very, very simple for you to understand. So you can watch it one, two, as many times as you want. And then we can meet to go over the different options together and have a very productive conversation. That's how I set up the client as well. That is awesome. So Jeremy, do you ever get pushback from clients for sharing that information with the realtors? No. I just know that's a hesitation for a lot of loan officers. So there's just, I mean, so much value here. What else do you wanna add, Dave? Oh, you're killing it, bro. You have some of the best scripts. I'm showing on the screen. I took one of the scripts from one of the LinkedIn articles I did with you, Jeremy. I put it up here. Uh, again, if you're watching the recording, we'll provide these scripts for you. Uh, you are killing it. I don't know how much longer you can stay on, but if you are on the call, we'd love to unmute you and bring you back in. Any, any last words or thoughts before we uh, bring in the next guest? Yes. Don't be afraid. That's it. Don't be afraid. Like, even what Todd just asked, I get that, right? Um, have I ever, ever had someone 
say like, hey, don't, sure. But I mean, we're talking like maybe two out of 3,000 that I've done. Um, and those people usually suck. So just don't be afraid of being vulnerable and being in a real relationship. That, that's all. Dude, I love it. Thank you so much, Jeremy. We got some uh, fabulous comments on that. And as always, uh, you delivered high value. We know how busy you are. So um, thank you very much. Um, stay tuned, folks. We still got um, some big hitters coming up, um, including Danny Harani, who we know always uh, delivers just equally to what Jeremy does. We got Kelly Zitlow, Nicole Solari, and others. Um, real quick, Dave, since he's talking about TCAs, why don't you just real quick talk to those who aren't familiar with it about what you guys have going on over at Mortgage Coach? I will. I will. And by the way, Jeremy, I've got Nicole coming up and everybody in the Mortgage Coach community, Nicole was referred by Jeremy. She's one of his top agents. And if you've got a top agent like Nicole that you want me to interview, love these interviews. So because we're getting so many questions on what is a total cost analysis, what is Mortgage Coach, I will show you what we are. So we believe that the best loan officer is an educator, is a teacher, and is multi-channel. So when it comes to sending rates and fees, is sending it in a fee worksheet at a PDF, is that the best way to get conversion? Is that the best way to create a client for life? Is that the best way to have a multi-channel relationship? And I would just say no. The best way to do that is a mortgage coach total cost analysis. So while we are a lot of things, I want you to think of, of three things. One, every mortgage coach, converts more of their leads into clients for life. Every mortgage coach closes more loans and every mortgage coach is delivering this modern mortgage experience. So this is a family member um, looking at a first time, a rent versus own analysis in a coffee shop. That's the type of advice and information. This is actually a picture of Wally Elderberry going over mortgage options. So just think of us, whether you have people that are still coming into your home or excuse me, into your office, or everything is online and over the phone, Mortgage Coach is there to help you deliver a competent decision. So right here, we integrate with a lot of different LOSs, CRMs, pricing engine, this is Optimal Blue. So you can literally go from, I'm pricing out my loan, I pick a few options, I click the Mortgage Coach button, and out comes this beautiful custom presentation that helps you convert more borrowers. So again, this is our Optimal Blue integration. Whether or not your lend the lender you work for has this activated, we still want you to reach out to us, but it's got their name, it's got their information. And this is what Jeremy was talking about earlier where he takes the link and he actually texts that. By the way, everything that you're seeing right now, you can do from your mobile phone. In fact, you can even drive this live experience where whatever you want the borrower to see, they see. So like, this is an example where the loan officer is on the mobile phone, the family is on a laptop, and the loan officer is just driving that experience. So just think of us as, if you wanna be an advisor, you wanna be a coach to borrowers, Mortgage Coach is both a technology platform and a training platform. Check it out, Jay Forts. Jeremy, by the way, how much are you using the mobile app versus the desktop nowadays? Um, I, I use it a lot. I mean, um, typically I make most of my stuff on my desktop, but editing wise, I use this all the time on the go. So, and the only reason that is, is that um, I basically chunk my day, right? Where I'll do like an hour and I'll pound out 10, seven or 10 TCAs and send them out. Um, but I use the mobile app literally every single day. It's, it's fantastic. Love it. Well, I want to get back into the interviews. Do want to remind folks that one, we have an ROI calculator to help you real, do your own math. You know, how many credit reports are you running? How many loans are you closing? Figure out how Mortgage Coach can help drive that experience. And I will also put a link down below. So if you want to sign up for a demo, or if you just want to sign up for Mortgage Coach and get started, we'll put links below the recording and we will provide that information. So Jeremy, really appreciate you, brother. Um, and Todd, I don't know if we have the next guest here, but I want to get ready to tee that up. We do, we do. Justin Brown is coming on in, and uh, Justin is uh, new to me, and I've uh, just heard great things about uh, him, and we're kind of excited to share um, some different scripts. So we're getting ready to head some uh, new directions uh, with you guys now, and he's going to talk about how he handles rate shoppers and then what he's scripting for loan update calls, which is just one more critical part of today's mortgage experience. So how you doing, Justin? I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys doing? We are doing awesome. We are doing awesome. So uh, take it away. Start talking about rate shoppers. Yeah. First, first I'd like to thank you for putting me after uh, Jeremy here. But 
Um, I'll still uh, jump into what I got here. So with, with rate shoppers, um, it's a big topic right now with, with margin compression and, and rates. And, and uh, you know, I have LOs here that I'm having to talk to in my team. The number one thing I really had to do is just dig down and find out what is the true value. Because everybody says, well, sell service. You have to sell the service if your rates aren't going to be on point. And that's such a generic term, um, selling the service. What is the service, right? So we've had to really, really dive in and create some value with that service that we could express and, and show. So what I sell for service, somebody else might not be able to. So there's not really a generic script that everybody could use to overcome this. I still think it comes down to the loan officer really taking the time to develop what is the service you're exactly selling? So it could revolve around mortgage coach, you know, where you could show people their tax benefits and actually help advise them on maximizing a tax strategy and creating wealth and doing annual reviews and stuff like that. I used to do that. Um, but now my thing is we have, and I think Jeremy has something similar um, where we do like a 14 day, you know, close guarantee where we'll close within 14 days or we'll pay the seller whatever per diem you want to write on the contract. And we do a no deposit or uh, we do a deposit guarantee for the buyers so they could write no loan contingencies as well. So what I express to the clients is like, look, I just had this conversation yesterday. If a listing agent has 15 offers on the property, it's super competitive market right now. You're going to get 10, 15, 20 offers on a good property. If you have an offer from some random bank that they don't know or internet lender with a 30 or 45 day escrow, you're going to have to offer the highest price on that to get yours considered. Now, if I could come in and help your offer get pushed to the front of the pack without you having to offer an extra five or $10,000 on the price, that's how I'm going to save you money. And that's how I'm going to give you value. Because by me showing that we could close with no loan contingencies, that we could close in 14 days, that I'll pay a per diem, I'm going to move your offer to the front of the pack. And that's where my value is going to come right there. So I had to get really specific. And again, you have to work somewhere that could provide this and you have to be skilled enough to be able to put the deals together properly. So not everybody is in that situation, but I had to create true dollar value where I was a quarter higher than somebody else. And I did the math and said, look, over 10 years, that quarter that you do with me, that, that I'm higher will cost you an extra five grand. But I know this listing agent's taking this offer and you're not having to spend an extra five grand on the price where that's where I'm going to save you the money. You could always refinance later. So that's been a good script that's been working with me, but I have actual value that I've created around what I could do, what my service is. So that's, that's really the whole thing I wanted to cover is you could have a script, but you really have to take the time to find out what is the pain point, the true pain point you're going to help alleviate for that client. And what's that service, that specific service you're going to deliver? That's what's worked best uh, for me. I mean, that's huge. So, you know, think about that, folks, as you're going through what are those value propositions that you have that, that you can offer in your market at your company. Um, let's switch gears straight onto the update calls. Walk us through when you're doing update calls. Is it weekly or is it when the activities happen? And then what do those sound like? Yeah, I love the update calls. So, um, I do them every Tuesday. I'm part of the, the core coaching and stuff. And, they, you know, Tuesday updates is, is what we're supposed to do. Um, I used to make the mistake of going in and giving them a full update on their file. And then I would get sucked in with, with a lot of questions and getting involved. So I've shifted it around and I think it works best where, you know, when you're at a restaurant and the waiter's helping you, but then every once in a while, the manager might walk around and, Hey, you doing okay. We taking good care of you. That's essentially all I do. I just, I, I have my list of the, the buyer's agent, the listing agent and the buyers. And I just do a quick call where, Hey, how are you? You know, how's the process going? It, I, you know, I know it could be overwhelming and sometimes they'll get into it like, oh my gosh, it's so much work right now. It's so much stress with uh, trying to manage my job and, and the timelines and, you know, yeah, I, I get it. I just try to empathize with them, spend a minute just connecting and empathizing and listening to them. And then at the end, it's just like, hey, are we taking good care of you? Is everybody taking good care of you? Awesome. All right. Well, you got my number. If anything comes up, you know, make sure you call me. And it's just a great way to just connect and build that relationship and just a touch point. So I don't really dive into a lot of specifics. It's more just empathy and asking if we're, we're taking good care of them. Well, and that's huge. I think that's where people get caught up, right? Is that's they're, they want to study the loan file before they call. And in the end, you're right. You just want to make sure that they feel like everything's on track and that they feel good. Any other, um, how would you, what would you tell a loan officer who's not doing update calls of why they should be doing them? That's huge. I have listing agents right now that I've met through update calls that I've never met in person that are sending me deals that we're closing every month. So throughout, you know, if you're consistent with it, 
that's low hanging fruit with the listing agents because nobody really does that consistently. And if you guys are closing on time, everything's going smooth, the communication's great. When you're calling the listing agents and checking in, hey, are we taking care of you guys? Are they responding to you? Do you have any concerns? And you're consistently doing that. It just opens the door where just by doing that, I, you know, I definitely add transactions uh, to my month, you know, every month. No, no, no doubt. And I would just say the fact that you're doing it is separating yourself from the sea of other loan officers that are sending, you know, generic marketing and not showing up personally. So just doing it is a, a big part of the strategy. Yeah. And I think consistency is the key, right? I mean, yeah. people talk about it, but are you actually doing it? So uh, great job, Justin. We really appreciate you taking time out and we are uh, going to keep moving through here to keep us on track and we're going to bust too sweet here momentarily. Um, and Stu's going to be talking about how he positions himself with borrowers and how he proactively addresses rate with borrowers. Uh, you know, we know rate is such an important thing. And so we're going to continue to bring in different perspectives um, for this call. So how are you doing, Stu? Doing well. How are you guys doing? We're doing awesome. We're, we're doing awesome. We're, we're doing good. Hey, I, before we bring Stu in, he's in Bar Berkeley, Northern California, highly competitive market, massive rate shopping, competing with big banks, competing with online. And so I would just say everyone, regardless of what market you're in, you know, if you're in one of those markets, it's totally on point. But hey, even if you're not, everybody's getting grinded. I've interviewed Stu a number of times recently and can't wait to hear you unpack how you position yourself. So why don't you kind of start with that, Stu? Yeah, happy to. So um, the, the biggest thing is that I start out by saying to the client, I am an educator and an advocate. So from the first conversation we have until the day they get their keys, I am there to provide education and to advocate on their. So, so what I what I mean by that is education wise, I'm going to walk them through every component of getting a mortgage. So most people come to me. I work with a lot of millennials. I'm a millennial, so they come to me not knowing what a mortgage is. So I literally start from square one, and I'll educate them up to a point where they can make their own decisions about their loan. So a, I'm an educator. B, I'm an advocate. So I will go through uh, the process of how I'll call the listing agent. So, you know, you're getting your offer ready. We've done all this hard work together, Mr. Borrower, Mrs. Borrower, and getting your file ready. And then once your offer goes in, I'm going to call the listing agent and tell them why they should accept your offer that we always perform. I will always perform. I'll always do what I say I'll do. You will get your, your clients, uh, Mr. Listing agent, uh, the money that they need and my buyers will perform. So, uh, I'm positioning myself right away as a member of the team for them. So Dave, you were saying my market is competitive and, and it is ridiculously competitive. I, I frequently, it's 20 offers going in on a property. I'm competing against local IMBs, against retail banks, against online banks. So I am positioning myself as a member of their team. I'm not some service provider who's going to get them a loan. I am someone who's going to help them get the house. Me and the realtor are on a team together with the borrower, making sure that they get the home that they want to get. So from day one, I'm a team member. I'm not a service provider. I'm a team member. When you work with me, I'll do what I say I'll do 100% of the time. I'll educate you throughout the process and I will deliver always. So that's kind of where I'm coming from when I have that first conversation. That's awesome. That's awesome. What, um, as far as the rate objections, what are you using to overcome them when, you, when you're getting more pushback, even with those great scripts? Yeah, good question. So I, I do sort of what Justin was just talking about, where I'll, I'll sort of stretch out the timing and say, okay, well, if my rate is a quarter point higher, what does that mean in dollar terms? And I'll do something more specific to my market because price appreciation is super rapid here. So I'll say to them, you know, another, another mortgage company is offering a quarter point better than rate. Sure but they're taking 30 days to close. It's impossible to get an offer accepted in 30, with a 30 day close of escrow in a market. It's too competitive, it just doesn't happen. If you're lucky, lucky enough to be that person that gets the 30 day offer accepted, it's gonna happen six months from now. If the current rate of price appreciation continues, six months from now, that same home will be worth 5% more. So even if you get that lower rate, if you're paying 5% more for the house, you're getting that lower rate on higher borrowed money. Therefore, the amount of interest you pay is going to be roughly equivalent to what you get today with me and you'll get your house faster. So I, I frame it in the context of my market and I frame it in the context of giving them real data. I'm not trying to sell them on, you know, oh, you know, mumbo jumbo, I'm a great person, whatever. It's data. I give them data. I do it with TCAs. So I, I use TCAs 
all throughout my day. And I'll provide all this data to show them this is what I'm talking about and this is why it's relevant to you. So I have these conversations early on. So my goal is to identify who the shoppers are as early as I possibly can to target them specifically on the things that you know, Justin was talking about with stretching out the time frame, also looking at you know, how quickly their offer will get accepted and how that'll impact the interest that they pay. Um, but anyway, I do that very, very early. And the goal with that is if someone is a shopper and they're not going to ever see my value, I don't want to spend weeks and months working with them and trying to convince them that they really should see my value. If they don't see it, I want to know early on so I can kind of let them go, hey, Wells is your, your place, you got it. Um, but anyway, so I talk rates early on, I send rates early on, I give my value proposition, I make it clear to them that I am their best chance of getting a house. And then if they're on board and they get the value, great. By the time they're in contract, they know they're on board, they get it. So uh, a lot of it just comes from front loading my work, making sure I'm clear with them on what my value is, making sure they get it. And if they don't get it, no hard feelings. There are plenty of other people out there. I'll go find them. I, I love when I interviewed you, you said, hey, if I'm going to lose, I want to lose quick. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and you uh, I do. yourself as an educator, you deliver a total cost analysis when you say TC. Yep cost analysis so you say something and then you demonstrate it yep and it's guys it's a proven formula the best loan officers in america follow this any other things you want to share Stu, before we bring kelly zitlow in um just that all of this the, the mortgage coach the tca in particular is a long-term tool it's easy in the short term because it enables you to send a million quotes to a borrower i was at i got a call 8 30 last night a client wants to make an offer in the morning can you please please send me an updated tca Sure, no problem. I crank it out in five minutes. So it's great in the immediate term, but it also enables me to come back to them years later and say, hey, this is what it looked like when you bought your house. Here's an updated TCA to show you where rates are. So I'll do my annual mortgage review, circling back to the original TCA, giving them an updated one. So I'm positioning myself from the first call that I ever have with the client to be their mortgage person years down the road. And I do that by providing data and by delivering always. Love it. Well, hey, thank you very much. Hopefully you can stay on it and check it out. And Stu, you you rocked it out. Really appreciate your pleasure. Time. Take it All easy. Right. Kelly Zitlow, thank you so much for fitting us in between all your realtor meetings. Uh, how are you doing, Kelly? I'm doing well. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Check you okay. out. You've got, the, awesome. you've got the app working. You know, you are Ooh. ready to rock. <laughs> So, so folks, we've got Kelly Zitlow, an incredible mortgage coach leader and professional. She's in between realtor meetings. She jumped in at a specific time to deliver some value. Kelly, you've got a lot of great scripts. The two we want to get out of you today is one, some of your scripting for inviting realtors to the educational events that you do. Um, okay. But first, I want to make sure, because what makes you unique in our community is your scripting that, you know, you not only position mortgage coach at the front end, the total cost analysis, but you update the family throughout the process. So give us a feel for how you do that. And then let's do your realtor script. Absolutely. So um, part of that conversation, and I hate the word script, I'm just going to let you know that because everybody's unique, but we do tend to say things over and over again. And so one of those things that we chat with a lot with our clients is that uh, there is kind of like an old fashioned way to do business it, when it comes to home lending. And then there is a newer way to do business, specifically when it comes to giving people the information that they need to better evaluate what's best for them. So as you know, with technology and the internet, there's a lot of noise out there and lenders are still issuing, you know, five different old good faith estimates and expecting a client to be able to uh, navigate those. Well, we don't. So we believe that using our cost analysis app, we're giving you the information that you need at your fingertips. It's easy to understand, and it really leads you to be able to make the best lending decision for your family. So we really believe in that. And then as you know, Dave, we update that cost analysis throughout the process. So we issue it initially up front at the pre-qualification stage, giving different options. Once they go under contract, then we're taking that purchase price, the property specific numbers, we're updating it then. Once we lock it, we update it. Through the process, we update it. And then at closing, we update it as well with the final terms to match the CD. So when it comes to the mortgage uh, review, annual review, we've already got all of the information in there and it's easy for us to access and update and give information for the future. 
that's just such a huge best practice, everyone, right? I mean, most, most people just do it once and then next year you're scrambling at the annual mortgage review. And so that's just awesome value throughout. Um, we also have a great video of Kelly talking about how she teaches video to her realtor. So let's talk about how you're getting your realtors to your class. That video is available in the Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind group, but I um, mean on YouTube, but why don't you jump in with that script of how you're getting people to those educational events that you're so great at doing? So, you know, for us, we try to focus on the pain point with all of our classes. So what in that class is something that can benefit the realtor? And when it comes to the video class, everybody needs to know Everybody thinks they need to be doing video and they should be, but they just don't know where to start. And so we go after the pain point, which is, are you afraid to be doing video or, you know, let us break down the barriers or are you losing your clients to online lead gen systems, that kind of stuff. So when it comes to inviting realtors to classes, we really ascertain the pain point and then we set up our messaging around that pain point to get them in the class. Hey, hey, I'm still here. Uh, my first mistake of the event, I didn't quite unmute it in time. Um, oh. Hey, I really appreciate you doing this in between meetings. Is there is there any other thoughts or anything else you want to share knowing that you've got a big community of mortgage professionals on today's call? Any other thoughts you want to share? Well, I mean, I think my closing thought, and this is something I, I tend to be saying a lot these days, especially with online lending platforms coming into the mix, is that rate and term are important pieces to the puzzle, but they're not everything. Because if that lender can't close, it doesn't really matter what rate or cost that you're getting. And so really just bringing that value and making sure they understand that we can close quickly, that we are educated, that we're going to educate them, that we're experienced, that we do all these other things that are really important to the process. And so, so many people just don't understand that. And that's our job to make sure that they are better equipped to navigate the lending process. Love it, Kelly. Well, hey, you crushed it. I know you got to get to another meeting. Really appreciate you staying on the call. So we, we still have a number of leaders to share. We've got Nicole Solari coming on. We've got Danny Harani closing things out. We're gonna to try to get Jeremy and Danny to stay on the call and do some Q&A. By the way, Jeremy, are you gonna be able to stay on and do Q&A at the end or do you gotta jump? Um, I'm gonna jump off right now, but I'll be back on in 10, 15 minutes. Okay, hey, by the way, any quick hits, hearing what you've heard so far, any Jeremy quick hits before you jump? Um, do one thing at a time. Ooh, good. Nice. Pick one, start there, don't, look at it all and go, I got to do all this starting tomorrow. Just pick one, the whatever you're struggling with the most right now, pick that one to focus on first. I love, love that, Jeremy. Well, hey, we look forward to having you back. And uh, with, with that said, I'm going to hand it off to my partner, Todd Bookspan. Uh, everyone on this call has been a mortgage coach, someone that's in our community. Most of them are also using the Win by Noon Planner. It's something that I think is an extraordinary tool and platform to make mortgage professionals more successful. So I want to make sure Todd walks you guys through it. So yeah, super excited to have an opportunity just to uh, give two minutes on, on win by noon. Cause I think we've all done that, right? You're going to wake up tomorrow. You're going to have an awesome morning routine and you're going to be really excited to get out there and use these scripts. And then you're going to get in your car and you know, what's going to happen. The phone is going to ring and it's your processor telling you that there's a problem on the Savage file. And so instead of listening to your favorite song on the way in and get pumped up to make these calls, you're going to end up spending that time calling the borrower, calling the realtors and figuring out that problem. And then you're going to get in the office and you're going to sit down and you're going to be ready to rock and roll on those calls. And then you know what's going to happen next, right? That one realtor is going to call and you're thinking to yourself, hmm, are they called to waste my time? Or are they calling me with a lead? And, it's, and so you're going to say, well, it's probably a lead. I better grab it. And instead, you actually spend the next 25 minutes talking about the basketball game last night and you're off your game. And you say, okay, all right, I'm going to get going again. I'm good. You're going to try to shut your door right as you do. You know what's going to happen. That one loan officer, that one who only does one deal a month is going to come in with a quick guideline question because you're the top producer in the office or to complain about a realtor and then you're off base. And so really what you need to do is be able to figure out how to structure your day better. And that's where um, win by noon comes in. It's really nothing more than just a day planner. In fact, we even have a fancy mortgage coach edition that most of you are using. Uh, but really it's a day planner that helps you structure your day around your most important sales activities. Um, it's also a business planning tool. It actually helps you plan and review your day, week, month, and quarter in order to determine where you're trying to go. 
Um, there's also about 2,000 people using it right now, split between realtors and loan officers. So it is a great tool for you to use with your realtor partners to help them plan. We all know that that's a great benefit for them um, and to go after new partners as well. And lastly, it's this philosophy. Really, most of you just need a couple of hours a day of being proactive with your time, really just to nail it out of the park to make sure that you really can get um, your most important priorities done. You heard Josh Metal talk about it, right? Every day his team wins by noon. They go in, they dial together, and once they're done dialing, they go. So what we're doing is it's our number one thing. So there's a couple things. If you guys go to winbynoon.com forward scripts forward slash scripts next week on Tuesday, we're gonna run a quick kind of I want to call it, don't want to call it time blocking, but really how the top producer structure that our webinar. So I'd love to get you guys out there to sort of figure out how can we take what I'm learning here, right? How does Jeremy take that hour and, and squeeze it in and make it work? So we're going to offer a webinar to do that. And then we're also going to throw out there, of course, we've got to throw out there a bargain because we're here on this webinar together. Um, you can get a free shipping, which is about eight bucks for two day shipping on the individual planner, or we'll actually throw in second quarter for free. So you get an extra quarter if you get the annual subscription. Again, same thing, just go to winbynoon.com forward slash scripts with an S and that'll actually give you the code. You can order it there. So I'm um, just super excited that I had the opportunity to be here with Dave and co-host this call and appreciate you guys taking uh, two minutes out of your day for a quick commercial since we had lots of questions on what Win by Noon is. And, and I just can't emphasize enough what you're looking at. And when you look at this program, it is basically a roadmap to success. Whether you're, you know, I had a post in our Facebook group yesterday saying, hey, I'm ready to adopt mortgage coach. Where can I learn? And a lot of the answers were, oh, watch this YouTube. Oh, go to their live training. By the way, start with winning by noon, scheduling time to learn. So I don't even cover that. So anyways, huge fan of win by noon. Hopefully you take action on this. And with that said, we are ready to bring in our next guest. Uh, Nicole Solari, are you here? All right, let's see if we can find Nicole. So I don't know that we have Nicole Solari yet. Do you see her? Is she, she no, we're a couple minutes ahead of schedule, believe it or not. So um, I will get a hold of Nicole. And in the meantime, uh, Danny Hirani, do you mind if we bring you on? Hey guys, what's up? Hey, what's up, my, my man? So Not much. So we'll, we're going to bring Nicole in after Danny. Although, Danny, can you stay on towards the end with Jeremy to do some Q&A? Oh, absolutely. It'd be an honor. Uh, Jeremy was awesome. I'm looking forward to having him back to, to get yeah. more scripts. I mean, he, no he, doubt. So by the way, guys, we may even be able to keep Nicole on since she'll be last. And we'll have a top realtor. We'll have Jeremy Forcier, one of her loan, her loan officer. We'll have Danny Harani. And we will, we will have um, a whole conversation. So if you do have questions for two top producers, and a realtor, start posting those. If you're watching this from Facebook Live, put it in comments, and we will try to get to as many questions as possible. So what is our first question for Danny? Um, Danny's gonna talk about something that I've totally drawn a blank on now that you threw me on there because I was multitasking. Um, so let's, uh, why don't you just jump in, Danny? You know where you're going. Yeah, well, so I, I think probably the, the thing that we're doing right now that is the most powerful uh, for our team has been uh, captive audience marketing, really getting back to that. And I've touched on this um, on, on some previous calls, but it is, it's more relevant than it has ever been to maximize the deals that we have and to actually create more business from the business that we're, we're already doing. And, uh, you know, a couple of people already touched on this and, and um, even Jeremy said, right, we have to always cold call, right? That's part, that's really our job. We have to continuously lead gen because there's a hole in the bottom of our bucket, right? Realtors go out of, you know, they, they leave the business or they slow down because they stop, you know, prospecting well. And if we're dependent on that lead source, we have to keep on adding in the top of the bucket so that we can continue to grow our own businesses. So what captive audience marketing is, is essentially maximizing those opportunities within every escrow that you have. So we've broken it up into three strategic scripts that we uh, jump in um, at what we call the emotional leverage points, where the agents and the borrowers are going to have the most, where it's most relevant to them. They, they have the most emotion, so they're going to remember us the most. And those three points are at the point the, the contract was accepted, and there's a lot of pre-work that goes into this, and there's a lot of foundational things that you really have to have in your business that, that some people have, you know, touched on. I think Stu mentioned, right, that, you know, there's, 
um, I can't actually remember who it was, but that there's risk in some of these things because you actually have to follow through on it. You have to be able to um, honor whatever you end up committing to. So you have to have a strong process and a process driven um, way to keep track of everything and be accountable to be able to make these commitments. So all the pre-work's done, you're in contract. You make a call to both of the agents and it's a very simple two minute conversation an, an expression of congratulations and excitement. And it goes something like this. Hey, Sally, uh, this is Danny with the Gaylord Hanson Mortgage Team. We're super excited to be in escrow with you on 123 Main Street. You know, usually in order to get in front of an agent like you, somebody as professional as you, I'd have to bang the phones for weeks, offer to take you to coffee to show you, you know, basically explain to you how great we are. Now we have this awesome opportunity to actually show you how fantastic our process is. And you're going to be introduced to our personal loan manager who's really going to be the air traffic controller throughout this whole process. But most of all, I'm just really proud of what we've built and the ability for us to share this with you in real time um, where you get to experience it hands-on is just a great opportunity. So really looking forward to being in this escrow with you. Feel free to call me at this number. Uh, if you ever have any follow-up questions, you know, Heidi on our team will be really leading the communication, but I'm always going to be here behind the scenes for you to reach out to um, if you have questions. Thank you so much. There's no ask in that. It's simply an honoring. You try to try your best. If, if they, if you know that agent is a top producer, try to your best to feed their ego, really feed into them. You're not asking anything. You're just kind of pre-framing the fact that you're really proud of what they're going to go through. And that this is this event, right? This escrow event is in place of that coffee that you would have had to grind out with them, right? And, and do your best to try to get them to send you a lead. So then the next emotional leverage point, you know, I'm in San Diego, California. We have uh, loan contingencies. I'm not sure that applies across the country, you know, but we have a soft contingency removal, meaning the client actually has to sign a document saying that their earnest money or initial deposit is going to end up being forfeit to the seller if they don't buy the house. So there, there's anxiety around that. So when we get to a point where we can release the contingencies, everybody's stoked again, right? So this is a point where we can insert ourselves in as the front end salespeople and this again, it's, it's, a, it's a very um, simple script. So you call the listing agent and buying agent, each one, and you, it's a, the analogy um, that somebody used earlier about the manager just showing up to the table um, to see, see how the food is, that's exactly what this is. So you ask a simple question, you know, hey, um, Sally, this is Danny with Gaylord Hanson Mortgage Team, did I get you at a good time? Excellent, I'm probably only gonna need about three minutes. I'm calling you to ask a favor. Uh, you've been with us now for about, you know, 14 days through this process. I'd just like you to share with me how it's going. And I want to actually ask you to be super critical of the process. We've only been able to grow our, our process and our team to this point by being really, really, um, by, by accepting the constructive criticism and being really honest with ourselves that we're not done yet. And so if you can give any sort of feedback or improvement comment that we can take back to the team and make it better for your seller or better for your buyer, that would just be absolutely incredible. Is there anything that you can share with me? 90% of the time they say, Danny, no, absolutely the best transaction I've ever been in. I can't believe you're sending Friday video updates. I can't believe I get notified before and after the appraisal comes in. You guys are over communicating best transaction I've ever been in. Absolutely. Uh, so appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, I'm, I'm glad. But if anything changes, if anything comes up from now until the end, you know, please call me at this number and let me know. It's extremely valuable for us to get that information. If you're in that 10% of the times where something is going a little bit sideways and they have a feedback comment, that is still extremely valuable because this call is a genuine call. If they give a feedback comment that you can apply back to your system, that's probably going to make the experience better for those next, uh, those next people. Again, though, there's no ask, right? Now, the final call is at closing, a super simple call. Uh, you're just calling to say congratulations. It's payday for them, right? So, you know, the emotional leverage point is, is very strong. So, you, you make the call after you've already made the two uh, previous calls to say, you know, Sally, I'm so, so um, excited that we were able to close escrow. You know, it's really been a breath of fresh air working with you. We could not have gotten to this point without your professionalism. You know, you, you know, being on your team has really been a true pleasure. Love to invite you into the office to meet some of the behind the scenes players that have really, you know, also worked to make this happen. We'd love to, you know, bring lunch in, 
have you meet those people face to face so they, they can thank you also. And then also share some ways that, you know, we can potentially work together, some tactical lead gen strategies that we've, you know, been integrating with our partners and really just a chance to get together and celebrate, right? So now finally we're having the ask, we're inviting them into our office. We're not, you know, in, you know saying, hey, where can we meet you that's convenient? Uh, and what we're finding about 25% of the time right there in that call, they say, sure, I'll come on in. And we're actually having in-office meetings and we have a, a, um, an office tour that we give and our, our team and office becomes part of the sales process. So that, that's kind of the one, two, three punch, right? It kind of ninjas them into the ass because by that point, we've honored all of our commitments. We've made micro commitments along the way. And they, the, the level of trust has really grown to a point where we have a ton of permission to invite them into that meeting. I love it. You uh, crush it. I can see the value in that. And it also puts the pressure, you know, from an execution standpoint, you set the expectations at the beginning and now you and your team need to deliver. So I, I love the way you've, you've taken accountability and you don't just have an outside coach, you're turning your referral partner, or excuse me, your prospect into a new accountability partner. So I, I love the script, love the strategy. Now, I do want to make sure we get, um, and I don't know which one you're doing more, because one of the two of my favorite scripts are the cross qual scripting that you have or mm -hmm. the counter offer script which one do you think is is happening more often right now well um i would say there it's about even i mean we literally just won a, a deal a cross qual deal on thursday um using using the cross qual uh, tca analysis and uh, i mean that one's very simple so strategically you present your total cost analysis, which anybody on this call is very likely doing 100% of the time because that's, you know, that's the best practice. So the, the cross qualification for anybody that doesn't know is when a client is already approved uh, with another lender, they make an offer on one of your preferred agent's properties and that preferred agent requires that they get pre-approved with you. Because pre-approval standards are not um, across the board, right, even, um, there's some bad lenders out there and, that, and that's, you know, I would say, uh, super valuable to the listing agent to communicate this to them. If you have a lot of strong listing partners is maybe a cross qual is a good idea for them. Um, it's a great introduction and you can share the cross qual analysis with the agent as well as an opportunity to build, build that uh, business channel. But for a client facing um, the, the cross qualification, um, it's very, very simple. Look, we're not here to um, steal anybody's business. We're going to make this for as convenient for you as possible. We just need to get some basic information so that if anything does happen with that other lender, we'll be able to step in because if we say we can do it, it means we're for sure going to be able to do it. So we get their information and, and then, and at the end, I really want to share with you some of the, you know, uh, solutions that we've been able to come up with based on analysis, uh, analyzing your information. So we get their stuff, get them pre-approved and then schedule a 10 minute review uh, and we say, we're gonna just quickly review your pre-approval with you so you fully understand it. But really what that call is, is a, is a review of their options in the total cost analysis. So we send them a link and then basically walk them through a, just a typical uh, total cost analysis. And then in the end you say, well, you know, are, are you clear on your options here? This is what we can do for you if the other lender isn't able to follow through on their commitments to you. And then they'll ask questions and, and I, I guarantee if you do this, more than 90% of the time, the client will say, why didn't my guy do this for me? Or I really understand it now and I didn't before. Uh, and then whenever you hear that comment, that's when you come in and say, well, if, if this isn't the presentation or the experience that you've had with the other lender, you know, would it be okay for us to continue this relationship and maybe, you know, execute one of these solutions for you? So we're, you're not coming in hard. It's again, I loved what somebody said earlier about being an educator and an advocate. If you approach this whole process with that heart, then that's, you're, you're going to find that people are just going to be drawn to you. You don't have to, you don't have to throw them into the boat. They're just going to walk right in. And then for the counter offer, we're seeing a ton of success with that right now for reasons that people have been alluding to earlier, which is there's 15 offers on every property. And still, I, I can't believe that some um, buyers will still just dig their heels in when, you know, they're making an, an offer on an $850,000 $850, house and the counter comes at eight fifty five, dollars and they're like, deals off, not, not going to do it, right? And then we'll do essentially what some other people have alluded to earlier, which is convert their 
feeling, that emotional feeling, say, let's take this down to some of the tactical things. So you're going to make a decision based on this information. And we want to make sure you make a decision around the facts, not around the emotion of feeling like the seller's getting greedy or whatever, you know, they'll, they'll tell you, you know, what that feeling is that's causing them to resist just accepting that counteroffer for the home that they've been six months looking for, right? So we'll use the uh, total cost analysis to show them uh, their offer as option A, then the counter offer as option B, so they can see what the difference is, because a lot of times that alone will be the, the thing that tips them over. They're like, oh, the $5,000 only translates to you know $40 a month or $30 a month. I thought it was gonna be more, right? So then um, that, that right away kind of reframes the way they think about it. And then we show them waiting three months, waiting six months. And we take data um, from the predictions from the Mortgage Bankers Association and in San Diego County, we can get the predicted rate of appreciation and then plug in two other options to show what would happen if they were back in the market for three months and what their monthly payment would do there. And then in six months, what their monthly payment would do there. It's absolutely eye-opening for the client to see the facts behind what the choice that they're gonna make because they think that their choice is to negotiate with the seller or to not. But in fact, what they're doing is negotiating with the seller or negotiating with time and time will win. If they decide to negotiate with time, they're gonna lose that fight. They'd be much better negotiating with the seller where they've already shown their cards, right? So that okay. one is absolutely uh, dominating and, and it's a great one in a realtor presentation to show because that's a huge pain point for them, right? They just got the person to make an offer and they're $5,000 apart and, and, and they're gonna take the person back in their car for another three months. You can really make a difference in that realtor's business if you can implement this well. Love, love that, Danny. Could, I've got a lot of questions for samples. Would you mind providing a link to both a cross-qual analysis and a counter-offer analysis? You can either add it to chat or just email it to me and I'll put it. If you're watching the recording, the link will be low. If you're watching this on our Facebook channel at the Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind, there'll be links below. Are you cool with yeah. that, Danny? Oh, absolutely. We'll, we'll share everything we do. Love it, love it. Well, hey, we've got... Nicole Solari. So Nicole, you are the anchor. Danny was going to be the anchor. And then we've got Jeremy on here too. So after you share a couple scripts, we'll do a little bit of Q&A and then we'll wrap up our first annual script of Palooza. So I want to remind folks, Nicole is not just a top performing realtor. She's you know been in the business four years, did 300 transactions last year. Um, number one referral source is open houses. So Nicole, I mean, that's one thing I really want you to bring into this conversation because your scripting and just your attitude for getting leads at open houses is special and best of breed. Um, so would you mind sharing how you are so successful at open houses getting so many leads? Yeah, can you guys hear me? Just making yeah. sure that I'm live. Okay, awesome. Um, so I actually founded my business on open houses, came into a new market, didn't know anybody, didn't know anything and just went balls to the wall, open houses all day, every day, um, sometimes six, seven, eight open houses a week. Um, and my conversion rate was about 50%. So if I had 10 people come through my open house, I picked up five new buyers if they were ready and willing and able to purchase a home. Um, since then, I've switched over to be more of a listing agent, but I found that I picked up a lot of my listings through open houses as well. So with the, with the scripting, since this is about scripting, um, I always just made people feel really comfortable when they came through because I put myself in their situation and I said, you know, if I'm going through open houses right now and I'm visiting six different realtors and I have a different experience with each one, I want to make sure that they feel special with me. So I would always have them come in. I would be no pressure. Didn't make them sign in right away. Um, I wouldn't have a flyer. You guys know I'm paperless. So I, I never have flyers at my open house, which is pretty unique. And I would immediately get their contact information because I would say, hey, if you want a flyer or more information about this house, I'm just going to text you real quick. That way you have my contact information too. If you have any follow-up questions, I let them look around the house. Um, and then on their way out is when I really hook them. I was, it's totally a no pressure thing. And it's just really, hey guys, what did you think of the house? That simple no pressure. And people really like feeling like you care about them. Um, and knowledge is power. So Jeremy's great. He, he and Jeb would sit with me at open houses, Jeb specifically. Jeremy, I don't think you've ever sat with me at an open house. I take that back. He's never sat with me, but good old Jeb does. 
Um, and having that knowledge and really listening to the way that they convert the leads and understanding like the difference in the payments and using the, the TCA through um, the app and having the technology and really showing people what their affordability is, is super special. No other agent can talk to them about, hey, did you know like $10,000 only costs you $17 a month? That's awesome. So I'd love to hear two scripts. One is how do you refer Jeremy and his team? And then number two is then what are you telling your clients when they say, well, that's really great. I'm sure Jeremy's great, but I'm already pre-approved with XYZ mortgage. Yeah, absolutely. So I, again, no pressure tactics. Like I'm not saying you have to work with Jeremy, but I always tell them that it's good to have a second opinion. Someone else that can just look at what you're doing. Someone else that can just look at you big picture and give you different options. And I'm not saying you have to go with Jeremy. I'm not saying that Jeremy's the best option for you, but at least talk to him, have a conversation. He doesn't have to run your credit. He doesn't have to do anything. He just can talk to you. And Jeremy's so great that when he does talk to people, he's really good about making them feel special as well. So they see the team dynamic there. And so the script is, Hey guys, I know that you're already pre-approved with X, Y, Z. Um, I understand that, but I would really love for you to talk to Jeremy and at least get a second opinion because you never know. Jeremy might not be the best option for you. In fact, you may go back to your other lender or maybe you even want a third opinion, but please let's just talk to him. And I would say mo more times than not, they actually end up going with Jeremy. Of course they do. Yeah, of course they do. Jeremy is, uh, you know, he connects, he delivers value. Uh, so let's let's stay on here in Rift. And by the way, everybody, those of you that are still here and you have questions, feel free to plug it. We've got Rick Shear. Rick, unmute yourself. Make sure we know you're still here. Maybe we have Rick Shear. Uh, we definitely have Jeremy Forcier. Hey, Jeremy. Hello. And we've got Danny Hirani. So by the way, Jeremy, you know Nicole really well. Yeah. Uh, we've got Stu Sweet. Hey, Stu, are you still here? All right, maybe Stu is still here. Uh, so Jeremy, you you know Nicole real well. You know, you, you've listened to some of the interviews I've done. Heck, you introduced me to her. What, any questions that we should ask while we're in front of, you know, thousand plus loan officers, plus the thousands that are gonna watch the video, anything you think we should ask her that we haven't asked her so far? Um, no, a couple like comments from what she was saying though that I think is really important um, is that what she's saying is so simple and that's why it's so powerful. And I know that that's a big message of mine all the time too, but um, I want you also to realize that it can be simple and really crafty as well. Okay. So I think being clever and simple is the best combination. And Nicole is really smart and she's really clever. Like even just listening to her um, just now talk about how she recommends a second opinion. I don't know if you guys caught it, but she countered, two objections in her script, right? She countered the, you don't have to use them, the obligation close, right? She countered it. She was like, hey, you don't have to use them. Um, you know, it might not even be the right fit for you. Like she literally is just countering all their objections before they can actually say what their objections are. So they only have two answers and that's yes or no thank you. And I think that's really, really, really important is to in all scripting and partnering with with great people, agents, lenders, whatever it may be. It's important you guys are on the same page as far as the feeling of your businesses. Because if the feelings are not aligned, right, um, it, it won't work. Like it just, it just won't work. So your conduct and your character have to be in alignment when you guys are working on a business partnership. So mm -hmm. um, I would say that she keeps it super simple. She's super clever. There's no pressure, but there's closure. She closes. So um, I love that. I love you, Nicole. You already know that. But um, she's a beast. And um, she always, it never feels weird in the introduction. I, one question I would ask her, okay, and I'm just going to ask you, Nicole, is that, um, so when you refer me um, to someone, is there a specific template that you use? And how did you make that template? Or who did you get it from? I use your template. You gave it to me. And you yell at me when I don't use it. Okay, so this, is, this comes into alignment, though, again, of what I was talking about, right, is that when you're really going to partner with someone, you guys, you, it, it's not going to be perfect. I'm not, I mess up, too, um, but we have created templates that we use so that it's repeatable. It's the same every single time. It's a process. So, um, anyhow. 
Absolutely. And to piggyback what Jeremy just said, so something that I live by, and I think I mentioned this before, and it's kind of my theme for the year, um, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. And if you care and you genuinely do care because you can't fake it, people will feel it. That is so, so true, so true and so powerful. And, and then notice that the fact that Jeremy, again, if you've heard any of the interviews, he's got great questions for a family. He is delivering obvious value, whether they do the loan with him or not, they're getting value. They're getting a total cost analysis. They're getting someone that really does care about them. And that comes through in so many different ways. So I, I could almost wrap up the call around that. Danny, I want to give you a chance to jump in if you have anything to add. No, only that the, you know, touching on the relationship, you know, the, the caring, you know, we have to make ourselves distinctly different from the uh, kind of internet disruption that's happening. And there's ways we're in the community, right? We are the local professionals where those outside sources, they can only, they, they can't create value in the ways that we can. So if we fight them on that field of battle where they already exist and they, frankly, they have more resources than us, right? These giant, massive companies. So let's be smart, right? And tactical and move ourselves into people's homes, right? Move, move them into our offices not, and, and actually create the relationships, listen to people, respond to their needs, learn their kids' names and do things that other people aren't, these, these big companies are, don't really have the capacity to do and they, they believe that isn't necessary to do. Um, so just make, we, we all know what those things look like. And I think as an industry, we've been trying to move away and, you know, do more online applications and, and get away from the face-to-face -face meetings. We have to get back uh, to the basic stuff that made us successful, you know, four or five years ago before those tools were even available. Uh, absolutely. The, the loan officer and the realtor of today in the future is high touch, high tech, and your humanity is all you have. I mean, let's face it. Online internet, whether it's lenders or realtors are coming and they're growing fast, but as a local referral based provider, you've got the combination of both. You've got, you know, you're in the marketplace, you're local, you can connect like that before. So guys, this has been incredible. Two hours of leadership, super proud of it. Todd, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully, you know, we've recorded this, it'll be available on the YouTube channel. Please like it. If you got value from today's exchange, you got an idea, give us a like in YouTube, share this with your mortgage friends. If you're watching this on Facebook, you know, share it with people that you think can get benefit from it. Nicole, I, you were some of my best interviews from last year. It's incredible to have you in the community. Appreciate it. Um, thank you to everyone. Todd, any final words before we wrap it? You know, I think that the bottom line is this, right? You all sat through two hours of really the best scripts from the best in the business. And now you've got to make it actionable. I love what Jeremy said, just start with one. Um, but I would spend some time, right? Block that time to re-listen again, right? Be, be taking notes on your best scripts and just start implementing, right? In the end, it's not what you think you're going to do down the road. It's what you're going to actually do today. And so my encouragement always is, is that action is the number one thing that you can do. You've got to execute. And as always, we're just super excited to have all of you as part of our community. Dave and I host every Friday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific our Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind. So we'd love to have you as part of that community. If you're watching this for the first time and you're not part of our Facebook group, make sure that you guys join that. And, you know, I'm just grateful for all of you for uh, sticking around through this whole two hours and asking questions and being engaged and certainly grateful for all of the speakers who took time out of their super busy schedules to join us. So thank you all. So one last thing, we got flooded with a lot of questions at the last minute. So do know that we will be following this, like if this is in the Mortgage Coach Facebook group and you still have questions, put them in comments. I know Nicole, not putting on the spot Nicole, but she has responded to folks a number of times and I will make sure everybody gets any responses to your questions if you put them in comments. And we will also include links to the scripts that we've talked about throughout the day. Anyways, thank you everybody. Appreciate your time and thank you all the leaders that made time to be here. Take care everybody.